Babysitting with rules wasn't easy. Parents always wanted to make sure everything went normally, even without them. Remember not to let Harry eat peanut butter after 6 p.m. Yes, she has to hear my voice every night before falling asleep. Here's the recorder. I've heard and seen all kinds of stuff. So when I saw a post about babysitting Annie, a 16-year-old girl with rules, I immediately thought that it was some sort of joke. No, it wasn't. It was far from a joke, as I got to experience it later. It was a dark winter evening. I walked into the two-story yellow house's yard while teeth-white snow slapped my back and sides. It was the heaviest snowstorm in a few years. My hands pressed a button for me to hear the doorbell ring and quick footsteps coming from inside. The house was cozy and warm. All the walls glowed in blue paint and the floor seemed to be constructed out of spruce. As I hung my jacket and put my backpack down, Annie looked at me from neatly painted stairs. She held the doll close. Was Guardian the name? I think so. So, welcome, she muttered. She appeared to be a general teen with dyed red, which had already started fading away shoulder-length hair. H had mentioned about her eye patch, which she did have. It was made from a dark cloth. A dark blue hoodie with the name Jasper, and bears and a moose around it, in yellow and green, hanged loosely on her body. Even her jeans seemed to be too big for her, but the best thing had to be her yellow woolen stockings, with the other one having a panda, and the other one with tiny white text and green dots. I grew up in a house where the temperature was always chilly, even in the summertime. Woolen stockings were needed, and as a child, I always wanted the ones with superheroes or animals. Uh, I'm Leo, but you probably knew that already. She simply stood there, awkwardly. Yeah. Silence sat when no one said anything. Then a thump was heard from upstairs, like someone had tripped and fallen down. I jerked and looked at Annie, who seemed to get even more anxious. What was that? Annie's face changed from nervous to awkward smiles. I... nothing. It was nothing. The silence continued around us. I had never been in a situation like this in a house where I would be babysitting, and the fact that I had to babysit a teen was even more peculiar. Later, I settled in the guest room. It was small, but still enough to fit everything I had brought with me. After 15 minutes of unpacking, I took a seat in the bed and took out my phone. I had to make sure that I memorized every rule. I did think that they were stupid, but it wouldn't hurt to follow them. I opened Reddit, read the whole post. Greetings. Because you're viewing this, you must have caught an interest. I'm asking for someone to babysit the girl Annie, her guardian, not her parent. We have no relations at all when it comes to blood. It's better for everyone that she won't meet her family. Unfortunately, I have an urgent meeting on the weekend. I have to get someone to babysit her. My co-workers and friends are away at the moment, even though she's about 16. I won't be letting her stay alone in my house. Don't get me wrong. She's one of the politest and friendliest teenagers I've ever met. Also, no, in my work industry, it is not possible or recommended to do a web conference or anything related to such. Questions related to it will be left unanswered. Okay. If you decide to apply, then these will be the first instructions that you would receive, just to show an example. You have to babysit her from Friday to Sunday. She will open the door for you when you ring the bell. A spare key is on the table in the first hallway. Paper with numbers is above it. If you need something or the rules tell you to call, here are all the numbers that you need. You can use the guest bedroom, but leave it tidy when you leave. And this should be already clear, but you do understand why I'm reminding you of it. Anyway, I made these rules to make sure that you won't get harmed or get in trouble. So the most significant rule is to follow these rules. Remember, follow the rules. Rules. There are some rooms that you may not enter. They are the master bedroom, the basement, Annie's bedroom, and the first floor bathroom. They will be marked by a red flag. Otherwise, feel free to roam around. Number two, always shut open doors. Lock them if they keep opening. If they continue opening, even after that, call the number on the number paper that says S before it. Tell him the situation, then take Annie and spend the rest of the day somewhere else. S will call back when he's done. Number three, act polite and honest in Annie's presence. You can swear, but not too much. If she questions anything, reply as soon as you can, and as genuinely as you can. You can't question her eye patch, guard, 
her past, her school, and her family. Otherwise, feel free to ask about her. Number four, while cooking food, don't make it too spicy or add too much pepper. Also, take a bite of the food that you made, put it on a smaller plate, and leave it beside Annie's plate afterward. Number five, you will soon notice Annie carrying a doll with a golden colored mask with her. Her name is Guardian, and she won't harm you as long as you behave. Don't touch her, but you can talk to her. She won't be responding back, but she hears everything. If anything appears weird or you sense something is wrong, ask her for help. Number six, if Annie desires to be left alone, go outside or in another room. Return when Annie comes out of the room. Do not listen to the voices you hear from there. Do not watch what's going on in there. Number seven, if you decide to go somewhere with Annie, like a park or a market, she has to see some other people at least twice a week so that she won't become isolated. Keep her close to you and do not invite anyone else with you. Make sure that she won't wander off or talk with anyone. Keep her busy by chatting with her, telling her some stories, asking for her opinions. If anyone approaches Annie, tell them that they got the wrong person and shouldn't annoy you. Then get out of there immediately. Often, the said person will start chasing, so leave the place and go home immediately. Remember that you can leave Annie home alone only for a few hours. If I hear that you have been away for more than you should be, you can forget about the money and your future plans. Number 8. She has to go to sleep at 10pm. Do your everything to make her asleep. After that, you have to go to every room's door and say the exact phrase loud and clear. Good night, see you tomorrow. Except for Sunday. You may say, good night, goodbye. This is crucial for your own survival and sanity. If Annie wakes up at 3 a.m. and comes to whine about it, you must directly take her to your car and take a night ride around the town. It doesn't matter where you drive. It has to soothe her down. You don't go near the woods. Don't stop driving until she gets tired. Then you can drive back to the house and help her to her bedroom door. This is important for you and her. Number 10. If you see anything ominous in the backyard, ignore it. If there's a creature on the window, call Annie and she will take care of it. Number 11. At night, when you're sleeping, you may hear something walking in the attic. Ignore it. If it lasts on and it bothers you, put some headphones on or play some music. Just don't play too loud. It has a good hearing. Number 12. There are going to be many people on the door every day, but you need to keep an eye on who exactly comes. If it's a bunch of children who ask to have Annie play with them and it's daytime, tell them that she's busy. If it's night, tell them that she will play with them. Then call Annie and tell her about it. If it's an old lady with a tiny dog, that's Mrs. Smith. She lives a few houses away from us. She will just come by and ask how you're doing. She's not hostile. If it's a tall man with a black suit, give him the papers located in the main hallway cabinet. Take three writings out there and give them to him without eye contact. Don't look at his face. But if he demands anything else, close the door immediately and ask Guardian for help. If it's an insect-looking creature and they ask for food, provide them some. Then shut the door without saying anything. If the doorbell rings but no one is there, leave the door unlocked and leave the TV on. The door will close on its own, and when the TV goes off, don't open it for a couple of hours. If anyone else, don't let them in, just close the door. Whatever they say, close the door. Number 13. After all this is done, never interact with Annie again. Never mention her. If you notice her anywhere, don't even look at her. Ignore. Forget. I informed the rules here because I want to make sure people are aware of the hazards. Can't stand charges, missing reports, and people coming to investigate what happened. If you're still sure about applying, I'm more than glad to hire you to babysit Annie for $950,000. Not a joke. I'll send the money after you've done your part. Sincerely, H. Insect creatures? Kids playing at night, saying goodnight to every door? Why does H use the word non-hostile? It has to be some kind of a prank. No wonder anyone else hasn't applied for this job. Maybe babysitting wasn't taken seriously when it comes to teenagers. Still, the final rule made me wonder, so... I have to act like Annie never existed after this? That was an unusual request. Now, what about the money? $950,000 was the amount H had offered. 
Where would he even get that kind of cash? His house didn't look brand new, so... I didn't understand. Maybe he just liked old houses better and worked in a well-paying company. Maybe it's time to talk a little about myself. Okay, as you noticed while hearing all this, my name's Leo Ryder. I am a 36-year-old man from Canada, and I live with my two cats, Cole and Poppy. I was a teacher three years ago until I got fired by the principal since... A lot of parents and children had complained about my teaching style and the strictness. Never understood it to this day, but never mind. I mean, I like little kids as much as they would be my own. That's why I chose to start babysitting, since kindergartens were full of too many children. Got a good amount of money from it, and I did part-time jobs as well. The rest of the Thursday evening went without any trouble. Annie behaved as politely as she would and showed around the house. I did, however, notice that she shyly talked while I was around her. At supper, she didn't eat anything until I got out of the kitchen. Later, I heard how she had made her way into her room and saw her taking a plate full of sandwiches with her. Of course, I considered pointing it out, but if she did it, it had to mean that she had permission to do it. I made sure that Annie went to sleep at 10pm. Then I read Rule 8 again just to be sure. I did as it told, feeling very silly. No one answered. No one appeared. But when I finally went to the basement door, a feeling of unease took me over. Basements have constantly been a little unnerving, but this was different. Something wasn't right, but I carried on to do it. The floor was concrete, cold to the touch. Air smelled like every other basement. It smelled aged, dry, rustic. Only one light bulb gave light to this place before the basement door. Good night. See you tomorrow. As I left the room and walked up the stairs, I heard someone open the door with a loud creak. My back getting goosebumps, I turned my head to see... nothing. The metal door was shut, as it was earlier. I just shrugged it off and went to check the backyard. Watching it from the window, it seemed alright. No intruders or weird people. At night, I had trouble sleeping. To be honest, I... I've always had a little trouble sleeping, but this was... This is something far worse. My eyes couldn't even close while I was on the bed, like a force was keeping them open. Then I heard the footsteps. Heavy footsteps coming from the attic above me. The planks moved on each step that it made. My mouth kept shut as it started walking, and I heard something eerie. Nails clawing the plank floor above me. Something crawled onto the floor. There was no way that someone or something would be clawing onto the floor, right? I mean, I... I didn't want to believe it. I couldn't even shut my eyes. I just kept staring at the ceiling. It just continued on and on and on and on. When the morning came, I hadn't gotten much sleep. The clawing had stopped after an hour. Whatever was doing it had given up. I wasn't going to check it out. Maybe it was a raccoon or some other animal who had nested in the attic. Annie had already made herself breakfast when I stepped into the kitchen. Good morning. How's your sleep? I asked her with a small smile. Annie glanced at me and replied to the silent, Good. We sat down in silence and ate our meals. Annie seemed to be in her own world, which made me remember someone from the time when I was a teacher. Nothing too special, it was just that Annie's hair rolled around her finger. It was so familiar, like I had seen it before. That's where I remembered the doll. Uh, where's Guardian? Annie's hand stopped spooning cereal from the red bowl and turned her head to me, no reply. She just stared at me with her brown eyes full of emptiness. No, that question was only about the location of the doll. It couldn't have hurt, right? Under her eye patch, something seemed to be glowing yellow light. My eyes widened. Air got heavy. The light illuminated Annie's face, making it seem chilling. Her brown eye changed to black, and her hair covered part of her face. Annie, you okay? I finally asked silently after an eternity. And he's looked changed. I'm fine. Guardian's just resting. The glow ceased immediately and everything appeared to process back to normal. That left me tense and confused. What on earth was going on? Of course the rules seemed to be about insect creatures and black suit men. But there had to be a logical reason for it. I wasn't sure what, but there had to be something. After breakfast, I washed the dishes and watched TV. 
I thought of talking with Annie in the afternoon. I wanted to know and understand her better. Annie seemed to like spending time in her room, and maybe she was an artistic kid. Maybe she just liked being alone. That's what I wanted to find out. Later, I went outside to shovel some snow out of the driveway in case of Rule 9. The driveway was quite packed with snow, so I started as soon as I finished watching TV. After I had done it halfway, though, I heard a voice from the street. An old woman was walking her dog and called me. Excuse me, are you the babysitter? Uh, yeah, I'm Leo. It's nice to meet you. The woman smiled. I'm Mrs. Smith. I just live a few houses down on the street. I nodded, remembering Rule 12, where she was mentioned. Isn't it strange to babysit Annie? The girl acts as if she were already an adult. My grandson would need that kind of energy. Mrs. Smith stated while her Pomeranian barked at the other dog and the owner at the other side of the street. Also, this house has always been a little weird. Some people even say it's haunted. This piqued my interest. Haunted? Huh? Why so? I continued shoveling little by little the rest of the snow as she spoke. Well, the neighbors of this place have told me that they hear all kinds of noises. Sometimes they even see odd animals around the house. Can you believe that? Mrs. Smith kept chattering about how the house was haunted, and in no time, I was ready. Uh, anyway, I have to go back inside since I'm done. Oh, would you like some coffee? I offered as I put the shovel aside. Mrs. Smith puffed. No, thank you. House has always crept me a bit. Even though Annie's such a nice girl, that doll she carries with her is off-putting, to say the least. With those words, she said goodbye and left. At 2 p.m., I prepared lunch and remembered to put a smaller plate for Guardian. As Annie came down to eat, she put the doll in front of its plate. The doll's 1800s blue dress shined in the light as it had small, diamond-like materials sewn into the skirt. Guardian's black as dark skin, however didn't reflect the light. I'll take this to my room. Annie stood up as she uttered. This time I decided to say something. Uh, but wouldn't it be better to eat here and talk with me? A little chatting, you know? The yellow glow returned. Guardian's face twisted and looked at me with its mask's wide black mouth. The air got heavier and heavier with every passing minute. Pressure started to grow in my body. Immediately, I regretted saying anything at all. My mouth tried to mutter, I'm sorry. The glow ceased once more, but this time slower, like she was waiting for me to say something else. And she eventually left. Guardian moved his head back to its original position. I left the kitchen as soon as I had made sure the doll wasn't going to move more. The food in my stomach wasn't there for long. The doorbell rang. Rule 12, I thought to myself. Then I went to the door and opened it. I expected kids to be waiting outside, but instead of them, a young man with light hair and a suit stood straight on the doormat. Fortunately, the suit wasn't black, but green. His gaze looked around the house past me. Hello, um, I've been sent here from, uh... Is this where Hewitt lives? Hewitt had to be H's name. The man's voice was monotone, robotic. Hairs on my hands stood up as I replied, Sorry, uh, but you gotta leave. Like a cat, his eyes locked on me. Why? because I've been told so. Please excuse me. My voice trembled. I started closing the door, but he wasn't done. He put his shoe between the door and the door frame, like in the old times the wandering vendors did. Where's Hewitt? Tell me, Leo, where is he? His voice sounded more and more like a robot or something similar. My heart stopped and my hands started to sweat. He knew my name? My shaking hands continued pushing the door without any progress. That man's foot didn't move an inch. Leo, where is he? Where's Hewitt? Now his head was peeking from the door crack. He had to be something else than human. No human had cat irises, sharp teeth. His eyes scanned around the hallway, looking for something. I couldn't think I couldn't think of anything. My mind was empty. He had to be just an illusion. He he couldn't be real. Leo, it's getting cold. Annie shouted from her room. Oh no, that'd not be good. The creature's eyes locked this time on the stairs. The door shattered in front of my eyes as he pushed his way through. Junks and pieces of wood hit my body, making me have multiple scratches and bruises. I tumbled down, hitting the wall. Massive pain took over my head. The freezing wind roared in my ears as it got inside. All I could think to do was whisper, Help, Guardian. The rest of it's a blur, since everything went black. I don't recall anything other than the high-pitched shrieking. 
Probably that man, when I eventually woke up, Annie was beside me putting bandages on my cuts. She brought a first aid kit with her, which was next to her, but when I turned my head, the door was still there. No sign of forced entry, no sign of blood or snow. Nothing, just the normal hallway. Ooh, what? Annie, what happened? Where is that man? The words slipped out of my mouth and faded away. Annie didn't say anything, she just made sure I was alright. At that point, it felt like the rules were real. I mean, Heward had mentioned why he had written them, but in the end, are they actually keeping you safe? Leo, you broke a rule. I hope you won't do it again. I lifted my head to see Annie's worried expression. Her voice fainter than earlier, she continued. Please follow the rules. And then she left me alone, sitting on the floor, wondering if anything was actually real about this house. The rest of the day went uneventfully. It felt uncomfortable for both of us. The girl seemed to be nervous yet again. It was like it was a permanent emotion for her. It was more reasonable if I didn't question it. This time I followed the rules. I kept my phone with me to make sure that I remembered everything right. Annie went to sleep at 10 p.m. I visited every door to the house, said the exact same thing. I closed all the open doors. I even locked the front and the back doors, even though they weren't part of the rules, just, you know, to be sure. Some doors kept opening, but thank God they stayed closed after I closed them. When I was making tea for myself to relax, I noticed a glimpse of a piece of clothing hanging outside of the backyard. As I carefully went closer, I also noticed a familiar head laying in the snow with black liquid around it. It was the man, his suit hanging from the tree without his body. I turned away and took my tea to the guest room, even though it wouldn't help me sleep. When the night came, this time only those footsteps were heard. They still kept me up since I still didn't know what it was that made those noises. Rule 9 showed itself when I heard a couple of knocks on my door. The clock displayed 2.59 a.m. And it was as dark as it could be outside. Not even the moon shined. Annie's pale and tired face showed up at the end of the bed. I can't sleep. Her voice was almost non-existent, like a small whisper in a void. I got up carefully and I put my socks on. Okay then, uh, let's go for a night ride, shall we? Heward had borrowed his car for me since I didn't have one myself. I did have a driver's license, which made things more manageable. As I got in the car, Annie hadn't moved from the doorframe. She'd put on her shoes and black and blue jacket. Her hands held tight to Guardian as she watched unusually. Where are we going? My heart softened. She sounded like a small, lost child, even though she was a teenager. She nonetheless seemed like a genuine kid. Annie truly did remind me of someone, but the memories were hazy. Like a cloud that I tried to grab, but it just evaporated away. I told you. Night raid. I gestured coming in. I promise you, you fall asleep. I'll even carry you to the couch if you're fine with that. That made Annie finally move and get inside. When I started back up from the front yard, I felt eyes watching me. I looked up and it almost screamed. A dark shadow was staring at us from the attic window. I saw its large yellow eyes following my every move. I sped up without Annie noticing it and drove away. The night was eerily quiet. No one was outside. The town around us loomed. Shadows danced in the small random lights that came whenever from the window of a house or whenever from a small lamp or advertisement on the street. I reminded myself not to go near the woods. So, um, what kind of things do you like? I tried starting a conversation. Annie stayed quiet for a while before replying. I'm not sure. Um, cats? Games? Reading, I guess? I nodded. Okay, um, well, what genre is your favorite? Fantasy? Comedy? Horror? As I peeked at her, her shoulders were tense and her hands still tight around Guardian. The doll's dark blue dress was a bit messy. Annie started to nod off after half an hour. Her eyes shut and Guardian slipped away from her hands. Time to go back. To get back, I had to drive over an old stone bridge. When we got off it, 
I caught a glimpse of a figure standing near the car. It had a dark body, something white covering its face. It stood over three meters tall and stared as I drove away. Hair on my body stood up and my grip tightened on the wheel. The rest of the way I kept glancing in the rearview mirror. I swear I could have seen a silhouette of the creature following the car. The sun finally rose at 10 a.m., making the snow blinding to look at. Today I'd thought of going outside to a park, but I was too afraid to get out of my room. Anything could happen. The rules were true, and it was awful. I wasn't honestly prepared for anything like this. Leo, can you make eggs and bacon for breakfast? Annie requested as she opened the door. Her voice had gotten more confident. She saw me and tried to continue, but she couldn't. Probably looked horrible. I hadn't slept the whole night. When I had gotten her to the couch, I had to run to my room and stay the whole night up trying to find an answer to all this. Sorry, uh, but... Rule 3 flashed before my eyes. Uh, ne never mind. Uh, wait for a few minutes. You don't really need to. I can do it myself, she said and turned away. Something struck the window. Annie turned around as quick as a cat. Her eyes widened. Annie walked to the window next to my bed. I jumped off the bed, hurting myself worse than earlier. Oh no. I heard a whisper from her as she stared outside. My eyes followed hers. And my heart sank. A lanky figure stood on the other side of the window. Its white deer skull mask touched the glass, and so did its thin fingers. The creature from the night. It was over three meters since the guest room was in the second story. Are the doors locked? How about the windows? Leo, did you see it when you were driving? Annie's whisper-yelling voice woke me up. Don't tell me you saw it, please. Tell me it's only here because it happens to be simply hungry. I couldn't breathe. All this going on made me go insane. I needed an, an explanation. I had to know what the hell was going on with this house, with this girl. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, I saw it. The moment I said that, Annie ran out of the room and checked all the doors and windows. They were all locked, but she was restless. I dressed up, but she kept an eye on the thing. She quickly told me that it was a wendigo, a, a monster born from humans and their greediness. There are a few types of wendigos, and this one's a seeker. A wendigo that, if someone saw it, started seeking for them later to attack them. To eat for its hunger, Annie explained. I didn't really get it, <laughs> but there was all kinds of stuff happening around, so my brain was full of it. Isn't anyone outside seeing it? I mean, somebody has to have called the police, right? I pointed out. Annie shook her head. No, no one sees it. Nor are other stuff that's happening. Suddenly a knock was heard from the front door. Annie's expression told me not to open it. Now all I could do was trust her. The gut feeling told me to. You have to go to the attic. Her words paralyzed my legs. After two nights, I just... I just couldn't go there. Even though being a male adult, there was no way I was going to the place where I had seen the dark shadow and its yellow eyes watching me. Not even Satan could have gotten me there. I tried to say something, but Annie had already rushed towards the ceiling hatch in the hallway. Adrenaline pushed in as I ran to the hallway, too, and saw her opening it. But did, did we actually need to rush? When a good creature wasn't coming inside, the knocks could still be heard. There was, there was no danger yet, right? I thought so until the door was destroyed once again and the guest's bedroom window was broken. Then all the doors began opening and closing. The movements were rapid. It was almost like they, they were trying to stop me from getting to the attic. Annie was already in there, saying something in a mad tone. Then she motioned for me to come. I did my best, but since I still had those bruises, every hit hurt more than the last. Then the screaming and the, the moaning started. Something was coming from downstairs, like, like hundreds of zombies and mummies dragging themselves across the floor and the stairs. I had to keep myself moving. Finally, I climbed the ladder, I pulled myself into the attic, and Annie closed the hatch. As soon as someone started to call out for us in a deep voice, Leo, Annie, please, where are you? Don't listen to it. Annie's voice was more confident than ever. She pulled an old armchair on the hatch. Her tiny body had given me an impression of her being not so athletic, but I was wrong. She easily had lifted it up and carried it. I felt my chest hurting and my feet tired. And then it hit me. 
I was in the attic. The place where I had heard and I'd seen the footsteps, but I didn't see anyone. The attic was larger than I thought. Still, there weren't many hiding spots. Annie noticed my worried face. Oh, you must be thinking about the footsteps. I nodded. Annie sat down, taking Guardian out of her hoodie pocket. We have to call the experts here to take care of the situation. Annie talked to Guardian, who stayed silent. Was it actually a living doll? I wouldn't have been surprised at that point. Headaches started kicking in. The night had fallen when outside was pitch black. The clock on my watch displayed 7.38 p.m. The opening and closing of doors was still heard through the floor. The voices had already stopped. Annie had been alone in one of the corners, cradling Guardian in her hands. Since she had told Guardian to call help, a smile had formed on her round face. I had taken another corner so that the creature couldn't jump scare me, though. I started to think the creature wasn't solid. Shadows danced around us, making the attic more dreadful. If you're worried about the rules, they're useless now. Annie's voice echoed from her corner. But you'll be paid the amount he promised in the email. You know, that's the least of my worries. You do understand we're stuck in the attic without any escape other than just a, a small window. There's a creature that scared me at night. Outside's a bunch of other monsters waiting to kill us. My throat was getting dry. It hurt to talk. Annie didn't care what I said. She was more focused on the sounds of the police cars that came from the distance. They're not police. It must be the saviors we've been waiting for. Hunter District. In the end, I ended up getting home a day early. It took an entire night for those hunters, as Annie called them, to calm down the whole house, make sure it was safe for us to leave the attic. As I lowered myself down, I saw ten people dressed in protective gear surround Annie and ask questions. I was only asked a few. They told me to pack my things and leave. On my way to the front door, a man came through it with a white shirt and black pants. His dark green eyes locked on mine. Leo, I'm sorry. His deep voice made me relax. I thought you'd be fine and the rules would make sure that you didn't get hurt, but... Looks like I was wrong. This man had to be Hewart. There's no other way that we could have talked about the rules. I sighed. You know, now I have seen everything. I got home after the clock displayed 8 a.m. Made myself some food while Poppy and Cole rubbed themselves under my legs. Felt comforting. Finally at my home, eating some well-spiced food. My cat sleeping next to me and TV on. I felt like heaven after all that. But I don't think it's over. Because I see shadows everywhere I go. Because someone watches me when I sleep. My doors open and close when I don't look. Men in suits are knocking on my door now and then. But worst of all, I found something in the attic. When Annie decided to take a little nap, I noticed a box near me. On a piece of paper, it was written Annie's school. And my curiosity rose. I opened the box silently. There were many papers, notebooks, but one of them stuck out. A school picture day picture. There was a whole class and two teachers standing next to them. Annie was easy to spot. She was standing in the last line. Long hair, small smile. Then I saw myself. I was the other teacher. I'd been an assistant for a teacher in Finland for a few months. No wonder Annie was so familiar. She'd been a quiet and shy student, but at the same time... She was energetic. She was happy with her friends. That wasn't it. In the picture, Annie looked around the same as now. Just the hair and the clothes were different. She was, she was 15 years old. And only when I got home did I realize it. That picture was taken 12 years ago. Good evening once again, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video, or for listening to tonight's episode of the podcast that's available on Spotify, or 
on Apple Music or on uh, um, any any other places that you can get podcasts. If you guys have loved any of the series you've been hearing on the channel, such as the Neverglade Mysteries, My Tiny Town Has Just Been Put on Lockdown, or Tales from the Gas Station, and you've wondered if there's more, there is. Take a look on Amazon. All these authors and many more have books available on Amazon right now, and some of them I've even done the audiobooks for. Check them out now, see if you can pick up a novel or two, and let them know that I sent you. As always, I want to give a big thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs, and you allow us to get a whole bunch of custom stories that are only heard here on this channel, on this podcast. So, a very big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Diana Krause, Maria Walker, Tanya Oren, Payne Gravy, Inactive Hermit, Austin Johnson, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Aka Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Matt Bach, Jabbles Raz, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficomel, Nana, The Morgan, Nick Weaver, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, Sky Maria Ravenswood, William King, Reaper 61167, Darth Miver, Micah Ortiz, Satanic Ares, Nessie, Parafa Panda, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Suzaku, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Miss Xander, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, and Corey Kenshin. And of course, everybody who's down there in the description as well, and everybody who can support on patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta for even one dollar. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for listening, and sweet dreams.